Good uh, evening, coaches. Welcome. This is Online Basketball Clinics. I have straight up 8 o'clock. We like to start on time. We are excited to be able to uh, come in front of you. We've got coaches from uh, all over the world, certainly all over the United States here, joining us. This is a program that uh, has really become a favorite of ours, and anytime we can share basketball uh, with all of you out there, it's a great, great thing. So uh, we're really pleased to have Lassen Perkins on. He is a uh, uh, he is a friend, and, and, and I'll tell you, those of you uh, that don't know him but know the name, I think you certainly understand that uh, there are coaches and there are ambassadors, and I, I consider him an ambassador of the game of basketball simply because, uh, yeah, he wins a lot of games, but I'll tell you what he does uh, much, much better than that is to help others learn the game, and I think that's what this is all about, and, and uh, welcome him. He's up here on the on the video screen too, but uh, my name is Randy Brown, and and a, a buddy of mine, a partner of mine, uh, Todd uh, Kazinka. Todd is maybe up on the video too. Uh, Todd and I um, started online basketball clinics last year, and uh, they were really a success. We we're really excited about the direction we thought we could go with them. And uh, Todd is on with us again tonight. In fact, he's kind of my moderator because when I when I screw something up or or I'm, I've got something in the way of something else. He's he's the one that uh, uh, hollers at me and, and tells me to get it right. But he's with us, and uh, we've got 25 guests, which is fantastic. And in in the past, uh, you know, I know that uh, the coaches kind of come in and out, and that's great. And um, we will uh, we we will certainly uh, uh, have you as long as you want to be with us. So uh, with that. Uh, coach, what I'd like to do is uh, have you uh, just greet the coaches here. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your background, and I know you had a fantastic team last year. And tell us where you're at, and, and give us some background on on your coaching. Well, first of all, Todd I, and Randy, I want to thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to take part uh, in this event. Um, I, I've been pumped up all day. Uh, for tonight and to be able to share knowledge and, and some of the ideas that uh, I picked up from the, uh, from the Summer Olympics. Um, a little bit of background, uh, I, I've worked at the high school level here in North Carolina since 1993. Um, I've also worked at the college level in Louisiana where I was a student manager at Northwestern Louisiana State for two years and uh, did a little time uh, in the USBL. Uh, when Raleigh had a, a club here, and uh, also been involved in uh, in international travel, which Randy, you know, you're familiar with, and and we kind of cross mm -hmm. paths there uh, in that arena. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, you know, in the meantime, the opportunity to write books and videos uh, came along, and you know, I've just been so blessed to uh, to to do that. And and really, the biggest inspiration to me was you know, Coach Don Meyer, and and talking about sharing you know, with others and, and giving back to others. And so, you know, it's just my little attempt to, to share the different things that I've picked up from, from watching international basketball. Tell us about your, your program out there and, and uh, the year that you had and what you're looking forward to this year. Well, I'm, I'm currently at uh, Chapel Hill High School. Uh, we, we took over a program uh, five years ago that had only won about 12 games in about four years. And so it was a, a major, um, major challenge to, to really rebuild the culture and to, to really establish a, a winning tradition. And uh, last season we were we were 26 and two. Uh, we, we started out the year 25 and 0, and then we lost uh, in the last week. We lost in the conference tournament finals and in the second round of the state playoffs to a team from our conference that added a player at the last minute. Well, that player's name is Isaiah Hicks who was signed with Carolina and is one of the top 20 players in the country. So uh, he, he was a major difference in the game. And, of course, when you have Coach Roy Williams in the building watching him play, it's packed, and guys are just, you know, playing out their mind in front of Coach Williams. But uh, it was an exciting year, and I know coming into this year we're returning seven seniors. And, uh, you know, so the expectations are that, you know, we're going to challenge again and, and hopefully uh, get back to the regional tournament and, and possibly contend for a state title. Fantastic, fantastic! Yeah, I know we all watch the Olympics, and and what you're going to share tonight is is really going to be neat. You know, the game is worldwide, and I just I personally love watching uh, watching the Europeans and all the different countries. They just seem to have a tremendous sense for the game, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna move on with that. 
uh, the online basketball clinics coaches is something that, that Todd and I uh, put together about a year and a half ago. We're both excited about sharing the game. And this is an environment uh, that's very interactive. And we've just had a ball with it. The response we've had from coaches has been fantastic. And that's our mission, to share the game. And we, we want to be able to offer these, uh, I mean, every week if we can. We're going to get a schedule out. Um, we would love to uh, have you uh, at some point become members of this because we are going to have fantastic guests and just have the, the highest quality online uh, clinic collaboration we think is out there. Uh, I, we have a special offer right in front of me. I have a DVD from uh, Coach Perkins called Great Scoring Plays from Around the World. and. Um, we, uh, th this is a fantastic DVD, and I'm going to throw a special offer at you. Uh, I give you an opportunity uh, to join my website with, for a 14-day free trial. And for those that sign up, we're going to give this DVD uh, away. Uh, and this is a webinar, uh, webinar only uh, entry. And so I'll, I'll talk about it th at the end. So please uh, stay until the end when Coach gets done going through his plays, and, and we answer any of the questions and and we will get you involved in that. So, coach has been introduced. Let's move on. Let's start looking at some plays. And uh, we have an awful lot of these. And I told coach he uses discretion on which ones he wants to use. And and um, uh, and I'm, I'm going to let him uh, kind of run the show here. These are the set plays. We've got probably what about uh, 12, 13, 14 plays. Uh, that are all diagrammed. I wanted to show you that that outline first, and um, uh, also let let me just tell you there's that this is being recorded, and so you're all going to have an opportunity uh, to re rewatch this if you would like. Share it with your friends, and uh, we're going to start with this uh, horn set, uh, Coach Perkins uh, from France. If you want to go ahead and just run through this play, and then coaches, let's do this. Down in the lower left-hand corner is your chat box. If you have a particular question on this set, please type us a question down in the box. And once, once Coach has talked about it, we have our questions answered, we'll move on to the next set. But we'll kind of handle it one at a time that way. So uh, if, uh, if we could, uh, Coach Perkins, take off and uh, tell us about the horn set from France. Okay, well, let me, let me first mention and just briefly talk a little bit in terms of international basketball. And, and Randy, as, as you know, and, and some of the coaches here who have, um, have international experience, you know, we have had a big impact on the way the game is played internationally because it's really been American coaches who have introduced certain concepts uh, to the international uh, community. Um, for example, the drive and kick uh, concept was originally from Stan Albeck. Uh, the former NBA coach who was doing a clinic in Italy back in the late 70s, early 80s. And then, of course, the horn set, which has really gained a lot of popularity uh, in recent years, was introduced by Chuck Daly when he was the Dream Team coach and was doing clinics in Europe. So, um, so let's start with this first play. Uh, this was a set that France used um, during the Olympics uh, really to get Parker, Tony Parker, in a position that he could go and attack a defender that's either playing soft or if the defender goes under the first initial screen. So as Tony comes off that first screen set by four in, in the first diagram, you know, on this, on this particular screen, just about everyone's going to go under the screen. They're not going to fight over it in this situation. So when Tony recognizes the defender going under, he's going to start back dribbling to create space. Now, as that's occurring, the, the, the five man on the opposite side of the elbow is sprinting underneath and it's going to set a flat angle screen uh, basically on the side of the floor. And what this allows Parker to do is to basically attack either direction and now it's going north-south versus east-west. Now, four, after setting the screen, is going to space to the opposite side and spot up. So if you think about on this play, if, that, if five's defender comes up, and tries to hedge in any way, Parker's blowing by and getting to the rim. Or if they try to help, then he's kicking out to the open shooter. Even if Five's defender plays back and plays soft, um, again, he's coming downhill. So he's coming at a full head of steam, going straight to the rim. And, and Parker just did a great job of this in the Olympics 
of attacking people who would play soft on this particular screen. I mean, and you know, you still have shooters spotting up on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Get the ball to Tony Parker and something good is probably going to happen. He is an amazing player with the basketball. Any questions on that? If you do have a question on a particular set, make sure that you get us a real quick question in the box. If not, we will move on. All right, we'll move to the next one, Coach. Argentina slip action, uh, pick and roll. Now, keep in mind, all the plays that I'm showing tonight, you know, obviously you may not have a Tony Parker or a Ginobili on your team, but the idea is to maybe to really kind of stimulate your thinking and to find something that could fit your personnel, and you might be able to tweak it, you know, in a, a certain way that would work for your team. The other thing to think about is, well, what do you do if a team actually runs this against you? How would you defend this action? So uh, going into the Argentina slip action, this is a set that Argentina has ran since 2002, when they first made a scene, or they first appeared on the international scene in the World Championships in Indianapolis. Um, they primarily run this play with Ginobili and Scola. And they can run it out of a variety of, of sets. They can run out of a 1-4, but this one's out of a horn set. So what happens is four Scola is going to screen down for Ginobili. Ginobili is going to come up, catch the ball, free throw line extended higher, and as soon as he catches, he's basically going to hand the ball back. So this is either uh, Prioni, who's the current point guard for Argentina, or it was Pepe Sanchez in the past. So once he hands the ball off, three, who's the uh, opposite wing, is clearing now to the ball side, five stepping up, and it's going to set a flare screen for, for Ginobili or for the two-man. So one dribbles to the middle of the floor in order to get a good passing angle and hits two. So now, once the ball is in two's hands, now there's a, a lot of things that you could do out of this set. There's a lot of different actions. But this is Argentina's favorite play. So five, after setting that flare screen, it's going to start to sprint over. And it looks like it's going to be a side ball screen with two and five, but five immediately changes direction and slips and, and goes to the basket. At the same time, four, who's Scola, is sprinting right behind five, and it's now going to set a second screen. So now two and four basically play a two-man game. Two's going to attack to, into the middle of the floor or could reject the screen and go baseline, just based on how the defender's playing it. Uh, and obviously four, based on their skill set, is either going to roll to the basket or it's going to pick and pop in this situation. But it's a great play. It's amazing that in the first game of the Olympics, when they played Lithuania, they got that two or three times in the game. And, and I know as a coach, when I'm scouting, there's no way I'm going to let a team get their favorite play over and over against me. And it was, I was just amazed at how often they got that. Mm -hmm. Coach, could you comment on the advent of the on-ball screen uh, before I move on to the next play? I, I've talked to an awful lot of coaches here just yet this fall just about how prevalent it is. And I, I'm sort of wondering w what we used to do without it, you know, kind of one of those things. And I know back in the day it was – it was pass, cut, screen, a lot of screening away from the ball, and boy, the game has changed that way. Just a general comment on on how long you think this will be a part of our game, and, and is it a trend? Will it go away? Uh, some offenses are nothing but on-ball screens, it seems. I don't think it's going to go away because, especially in Europe, it, and, and as and Randy, as you know from working with FIBA and, and some of the other coaches here, you know, it's it's pretty much a huge majority or uh, the biggest part of offenses. And, you know, it's the reason why it works. It's very effective. And I think especially now as it trickles down more to the the college and high school level, you know, it's, it's really, I think it's here to stay uh, because to me, you know, and I love something that Jeff Van Gundy said about ball screens. It's that, you know, it limits turnovers because you're keeping the ball and you can set it up to where you have your best players running the action. You know, there's not a lot of passing and movement, so you, you limit turnovers. But, you know, if, you're, if you don't have a shot clock, you're, you're shooting quick shots, which is sort of the, you know, sort of the downside of it. But um, I, I think as long as the NBA is running it and as long as it's, it's being done overseas, we're going to run it. And it's just, it's hard to guard. I mean, it's just... You know, you get a, a good team that understands, you know, how to how to run it and how to set it up. Uh, it's it's really tough to beat. Yeah. 
Next play. This is your wedge action. Now, wedge action, this is a, a play that was used by Australia. And keep in mind that Australia is coached by uh, Brett Brown, who is, a, who is an assistant coach for San Antonio Spurs. And this is actually a, a, a pretty much a, a pet play of, of the Spurs. This is the actual call. They call it wedge. And, and so what happens is uh, your point guard dribbles down the side. So, of course, with the Spurs, it's Parker. For Australia, it's Patty Mills. So you have a, a guard basically now setting a screen uh, for your um, for your four man, and, and of course uh, a lot of international teams love to play with a four that can shoot it. So for Australia, it's David Anderson. So now Anderson sprinting out and setting this side ball screen on Mills. So Mills looking to attack uh, the middle of the floor. Four now after screening, it's going to basically pop it pop into a space and uh, look to spot up as one looks to attack. And you notice in the diagram, two, after setting the screen, is going to spot up into the far corner. You could slide two over into the position where three is, and three slides down. This is a good man-to-man -man action. You can also run this against a zone. And, it's, and if you want to modify it against a zone, you would just have two cut through to that opposite corner and just have four sprint out and set that first screen against the top of the zone. Now you're attacking the middle of the zone, and you've created an overload on the side, a triangle with three, five, and two. But it's a, it's a very effective set. Again, the Spurs have, have used it over the years, especially with Duncan um, at that spot. And, um, you know, again, it's a good play that you can go against man or zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see where that, that would definitely be uh, a valuable thing to throw against a zone for sure. So that's, that's terrific. Uh, we'll go to the next one here. Let's see what we have up on tap here. Okay, double exit post up. I believe this is a four diagram play too. That's correct. This is now this is a, a set that Spain put in uh, late um, in the during the qual not the qualifying but the warm up when they played their friendlies. Um, they put this set in late, and from what I was able to gather, uh, the Spanish coach Sergio Scariola he always loves to have some sort of high low action. Uh, in his offense, where, wherever he's coached at in Europe. Now, you know, when you have Gasol, the, the Gasol brothers, you know, to post up, it makes it pretty easy to run high-low action. So this was a set that they utilized to take advantage of the switching that would occur between the four and five men. So out of the, um, what I call the double exit set or the diamond set, uh, two's going to pop off or come off the, the screen by five and catch on the wing. And as soon as two catches, Five, who is Gasol, is going to screen across. And four was, you know, it usually was a, a backup who was, who was playing that position. Um, one, who was called a run at the point guard, basically sprints to the opposite wing. And then it, either Navarro or Fernandez at the three spot pops out to the, um, pops out to the top of the key. And, and basically two's not even looking for four. It's just designed to get, get four across the floor to set up the switch and take advantage of it. So if we can move to the next slide. Two immediately swings the ball to three. As soon as three pops out, three's catching it and immediately swinging the ball to one. Now keep in mind, on that four or five screen, they usually switch that. So now Gasol has the defender that switched onto him pinned you know, in the lane. So now one's looking to, to make that post feed. Now in the event that Gasol's defender managed to get to the front, now they're flashing the four back up to the free throw line area. And he can hit that shot there. That's what made this set really effective. And so once you create the high-low situation there, now you're reading the defense. And then obviously two and three are sliding in, in, into space in order to create the high-low for four or five. Now, one question that came up in the, um, at a clinic recently was, what happens if you're not able to feed the ball into five? Well, you could have a rule that five now sprints out and sets the ball screen on one, and then four would have to space and adjust off that. But it's a, it's a very effective set if you've got post players and you like to play high-low and you know that teams are going to look to switch on the uh, the big-to-big -big screen. Another real uh, diverse play with a lot of different options. 
Argentina Flex. Uh, coach, there was a que there's a question. Do teams sideline pin or ice the side pick and roll? It really varies, but what I, what I saw a lot during the um, during the Olympics was a lot of teams icing it or or downing it, trying to force it to the baseline to prevent teams from from get into the middle of the floor, um, especially you know especially when you have uh, a situation with a, a guard like a Parker and maybe you're setting a screen with a five man like Turiev who's not really a pick and, a pick and pop guy. So they're really trying to, to get him down and, and, and basically he has less space to attack from. And usually the counter in that situation is instead of running your side pick and roll at free throw line extended, you're actually bringing it higher. So that just like the, the first play that we showed with France, your guard has more room to attack uh, the, the post defender who's trying to stay between the ball and the basket. Okay, thanks for that question, uh, Seth. Uh, anytime you guys have questions, just fire away. We'll move on to our next set here. Okay, Argentina Flex. Yeah, coach. yeah, that's okay. If, if, can we go back to the first one, Randy? Yeah, my fault. There we go. That's okay. Okay, Argentina, I call this Argentina Flex because um, when Ruben Magnano was the head coach of the Argentinian national team, basically from about 2002 to, I guess, 2006, um, and he's now the coach of the, of the Brazilian team. This is a play that Brazil ran uh, this, during the Olympics, but Argentina has used this action for a while. They love to use the flex sort of as a, a way to create movement and then to set up certain actions. So on this particular play, uh, point guard's going to hit the, the, one of the posts at the elbow. After set, it makes the pass. He's going to cut to the rim off the back screen by, by the opposite post man. Now, you know, you may get this occasionally. You may get that uh, a quick pass for a layup, like the, you know, like the UCLA cut. If it's not there, five's reversing it to four. Now, one's not even setting the, the, the flex screen. One's basically coming off the screen back to the top, two is cutting through to the opposite block. So one's not even screening, they're just basically passing each other and one's coming back to the top. Okay, now if we go to the, if we go to the next slide. So now three starts to cut through when four reverses the ball to one. Now, this looks like a regular flex action. You know, you're thinking, okay, three's cutting through, five's supposed to now pop out to the corner, and then four is going to screen down for two. But what happens is that three cuts into the lane, immediately turns now and sets the screen for two. So now two is coming off basically a double baseline screen by three and five back to the same side of the floor that they started on, and now four is going to screen down for three. It's a really effective action. If you're a flex coach and you can, you can set this up coming out of a timeout or maybe the first play of a quarter, it's a really great changeup. Um, I've seen Chicago run this for Kyle Corver, this particular action, and it's really effective. Mm -hmm. You can counter it by, you could still have three if three curls off or comes off of two. Three could down switch and come off of five, and two can come off of four. So it's just really reading the defense and, if, and having a good counter that, uh, that you could set up off this. But it's a, it's a really effective action. The other thing is that three could also back pick for four uh, instead of receiving a down screen. Coach, is it common for, for players uh, running all of these sets to break off uh, they're cut, uh, just basically reading the offense. It seems like uh, these guys have such a great feel for the game, uh, and I know there's multiple options, but but you see guys doing that. I'm sure they have the freedom to do that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you if you watch Argentina, I mean, they're they're probably the best at it, you know, because those guys have played so long together, and, and it's really, you know, it's just reads. And, and and what you'll see sometimes is early in the game, you know, they'll run things to see how the defense has prepared or how they scouted. And, of course, late in the game, they'll have the counter 
or, or they'll run the counter at that point once they've kind of determined, like say for example on the side screen, okay, well they're downing it or they're forcing it, you know, they're, they're not going to allow us to go to the middle, so now we'll go ahead and, you know, we're not going to show the counter early, we'll show it late when we need it. But uh, that's a very good question and yeah, I think that as you have experienced players and you, they start to read and determine, you know, what the defense is going to do in these situations, absolutely you give them the freedom to, to break things off and, and to either make a, a backdoor cut or, or slip a screen uh, if they're setting a, a ball screen. Very good. Next play, uh, two side elbow. Okay, and Jamie, no, I'm, I'm not broadcasting from my closet. I'm in my dining room here, so I, I can get away with that with Jamie. Uh, okay, two side elbow. This is a play that Russia ran, and, and if, you're, if you're familiar with the Russian national team, they're coached by uh, David Blatt, who uh, played for Pete Carrill uh, at, uh, at Princeton. Uh, David Blatt's probably one of the best international coaches there is right now. Um, I, I'm hearing rumors that he, he might be the first international coach to, to get a, a job in the NBA. Uh, he, he's done a great job wherever he's been. He's, he's currently coaching professionally with Maccabi uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, but this particular play is, is based on an old Pete Carrill action. Um, it starts, they can, they can run it either out of a half-court set or off the break with uh, four screening down for two. So two comes up to basically midpoint uh, in the floor, catches the ball. After that pass is made, three is cutting through to the opposite side. Five is stepping up and setting a little back screen for one, and one's cutting through now to the opposite side of the floor. So if we, if we move to that, next, um, if, to that next slide. So now on the next slide, basically, as, as soon as five sets that screen for one, five's flashing back to the basketball. And, and basically, this is like the old uh, Tex Winter uh, uh, you know, triple post, the pinch post action with five and two. They're basically just going to play a two-man game here. So, you know, two could get the handoff and, and, and drive it to the basket. But what Russia would do is if the defender managed to get over and, and be able to reestablish a defensive uh, position on two, then they're basically playing side pick and roll here. And, um, you know, obviously with uh, Russia's, you know, bigs, they were, it's like Sasha Khan, it's more of a pick and roll. Now, if this is Karolinko, you know, it's more of a pick and pop situation, but, but Russia really didn't utilize him in a lot of pick and roll situations. But, uh, again, it's a, it's a really effective set uh, that you can kind of set up to run, again, a, a simple two-man game with your best players on the side of the floor. If it's not there, you can either flow into a, a pick and roll situation, and you can even add continuity to this as well. Uh, if you're in a situation like us as high school coaches um, and we don't have shot clocks. The thing that always amazes me about these teams, Coach, is the fact that, that all five players are, are threats to make open shots. And any time you get, uh, like, for instance, this play with this uh, on-ball screen here on the right side, you've got one in the corner, you've got three that's high, uh, four can space out pretty much opposite of wherever that penetration comes from. But I'll tell you what, if you don't do a great job of guarding that ball and there's any help whatsoever, they're just superb passers and they are catch and shoot guys and you can't sometimes you can't close out quick enough to get to these guys I think they do a phenomenal job of spacing the floor and, and obviously their ball skills are incredibly advanced and that's what makes them so much fun to watch and so hard to guard oh absolutely and, and, and like you said I mean you really can't help I mean you really you, you know you almost have to play I mean you can't really you cannot help towards the lane you have to you almost have to play almost no help on certain shooters because, yeah, if they get into the lane there, it's almost we're going to concede giving you a two in the lane and give you that middle game, but we're not letting you drive and kick. Another thing that, I'll, that Randy, you brought up a good point of is that that four man uh, in that position there on the block, there's, like you said, there's several things you can do with that, that particular player. If it's a big, you could have them duck into the lane and basically take out their defender and prevent them from rotating out if the ball is swung mm -hmm. from, let's say, if two kicks it to three, and then three makes that extra pass to one. Well, in most rotation situations, especially if they're going to trap that pick and roll, 
that first defender that's rotating, or the second defender that's rotating out is usually that low man uh, in, in the health position. So by four ducking in and, and posting up, that takes that defender out. Um, the other thing, too, is you could just drop them down into the short corner, and if force defender helps up, then it's just a quick little bounce pass forwards at the rim. There's just a few comments down there. If you want to go ahead and, and follow up with any of that, Coach, go ahead. I'll pull up the next play. Well, I'm, i got to agree with what uh, Nick was saying about the um, about Black kind of taking over the, over the Russian team and just really um, doing a great job coaching because, you know, uh, there were some doubters, especially after their performance, I, I want to say in 2010, uh, at the uh, at the FIBA Worlds. Um, a, a lot of people started downing him, but I think, you know, uh, obviously the play of Kirilenko and Shved uh, really, really made the Russian team better than anybody expected. I mean, I think we all kind of know what Kirilenko can do, but I think Shved was just a major surprise in, in terms of, uh, uh, of his ability on the floor. And, you know, now you've got these two guys in Minnesota, and you know, that's, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens up in up uh, up in Minnesota this year with with those guys. And then if you get a help, healthy Rubio uh, on that team with Kevin Love, uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But uh, I, yeah, I agree. I think Black just did an incredible job, and, and I think that's why you're starting to hear his name mentioned uh, as a uh, as a guy that uh, could be uh, on its way to the NBA. And you know, I um, you know, I've heard rumors that. Uh, you know those discussions are kind of already underway with uh, with a, a, a team in particular. So uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. And it might be a situation that uh, it could be almost like what Atori Messina did this past year with Los Angeles, where he comes in as an assistant and then at some point transitions to the uh, to a head coach's job. Mm -hmm. Okay, the the next play four down. This is a. Um, this is a play that uh, was utilized by Lithuania, and uh, I had the honor uh, back in the spring to spend a week with uh, Katsias Kimzura, who was the uh, head, who is the head coach of the Lithuanian national team, and um, just uh, what a, and a fantastic gentleman. Um, I, I pretty much warned him. I was like, just get ready for me to hit you with a bunch of questions, and he just laughed and said. I'm prepared. I'm ready to go here. So we talked about everything that they do and, and some of the uh, things that he likes. This is a play that was designed for uh, to really get the ball to Klaza, uh, in uh, basically in the post. Um, again, it's out of a horn set. It's going to start with the five set in the screen there for four who comes across and catches it on the wing. And, and as soon as four catches it on the wing, Five steps out and set the back pick for one. So now Ford's first look, obviously, is maybe to hit one coming off that back pick uh, for a layup. If it's not there, Ford immediately turns and goes into a dribble handoff with two. Now on the next slide, as two dribbles back up to the top, five is going to now basically after back screening for one, Five is going to sprint over and set the, basically set a little side ball screen for two. As two comes to the middle of the floor, one's now screening for four. So we're getting this, we're going to get some screen the screener action here with four. Three is going to lift up in order to pull his defender out of the corner and pull them up so that two can either make the post speed to four. And if the defender manages to get over the top, two could swing the ball to three and three now can, can dribble down and make the, the post entry into four. Uh, but at the same time, fives now back are screening down for one, and so one can come off the jumper, or again, you're, you're, you're primarily looking for four um, for the uh, for the layup. Now, this particular action, this particular screen the screener action, Argentina runs the same action off of a free throw break. Um, Spain ran the same action off of a baseline out of bounds as well as sideline out of bounds. So it's a very popular action. Uh, internationally, so you know, obviously you can run it from a half court set, but you can also modify it to run it off the break or off of your uh, out of bounds situations. Mm -hmm. Another great play. Okay, now uh, another another Brazil set, Brazil's horns action. Now Brazil has 
you know, two pretty good post players in, in Splitter and, and Nene. And this was a an action that um, uh, Ruben McNano used to to basically get either player open. It um, it starts as a uh, starts out of a horn set with five stepping up and setting a ball screen for uh, for one. As one dribbles over, four starts as if he's it, instead of a, a pick and roll situation. A lot of times, a lot of teams in the horns action will have the screener pop and the opposite post player roll to the basket. So it initially looks like that, that four's going to actually roll to the basket and five's going to pick and pop. But what happens as three's coming in, three looks like that he's basically cutting to the opposite side of the floor, four and three immediately turn and basically set a staggered back screen for five rolling to the basket. And the reason that you have the smaller player setting the last screen is that if they try to switch it, well now you've switched the smaller player onto a big. And so you obviously have a, a mismatch in that situation. And then to continue, I think this is a, a two-frame if I remember, Randy. Uh, then what would happen is four is going to screen down for three in order to occupy the, the defenders up top. I, I didn't show that. I'm sorry. Okay. But, yeah, you would have if we, in that one, basically four would screen for three. Um, and, and so you would have screen the screener action after uh, setting the double for five. Unless I missed one, <laughs> which I may have, but we'll we'll jump. I, I think I forgot there. to put that one in there. Okay. Uh, Coach, there was a question uh, between uh, right before that last set uh, from Jamie, just about how you implement your favorite sets, and this is kind of a philosophical uh, question that a lot of coaches deal with. Uh, do you use kind of a handful of plays that you go with uh, through the season? Do you have new sets uh, every game? And how much can your kids handle in terms of the amount of information? Uh, and then he mentions, you know, Izzo's got a, a new playbook for every game. Those guys have more sets than, uh, th than the rest of the country combined, it seems. But how do, you, how do you kind of mix all that together with, you know, just kind of limited focus and, and brain power, I always say, that the kids and coaches have? Well, Jamie brings up a very interesting question. It's, I think, and like you said, it's a dilemma that every coach goes through. It's how much can I give my kids in terms of plays, but, you know, how much are they going to remember? Because let's face it, there's slippage. There, there's a lot of slippage from the practice floor to the, to the game floor. Um, last year, we only had maybe eight or ten sets that we, that we used in a, you know, in a game. And the year before, we had about 15. We had about 15 or 20. And typically, what my philosophy, what I like to do is try to run the same, to run all of our actions out of the same set. That's why I like the horn set, is that we can run all of our set actions out of horns so that it's hard to scout. Because if, uh, if we, let's say we run a horn set for a pick and roll, and then we run a box set for, for a post up, well, we're pretty much, you know, kind of telling you, okay, if you see the box set, we're running, we're going to run some sort of post up. So, right. first thing I try to do is we try to have, you know, a uh, that we run everything out of the same out out of the same alignment. I think the second thing is that you have a base action that you run, and then you have a counter, and that's basically what Izzo does. Izzo will have a base action, like for example, they have something they call their chess series, which is uh, that two three set that they run where they hit the high post, the guards cut to the basket, and then they come off the down screens. Well, that may be their base action, and now they have a counter or they have a different call out of that set that they run. So you can get, you know, out of maybe out of one particular action, you can have now three or four different counters uh, that you can build from it. And I, I just think it really depends on, on your kids. You know, if, you know, we're fortunate. We've got, a, as a, our team GPA is 3.6 on average. So we've got smart kids, so we can we can put a little bit more in. Now, if I've got a, a group of kids that are a little bit younger, maybe not as experienced, I'm not going to run as much, and, and I'm going to be maybe a little bit more structured uh, with my sets and only, you know, maybe utilize a couple of couple different things. But it, it really just depends on what's your fit and what's your, what's your philosophy. Because if you're a motion coach, maybe you don't want to run sets. But then again, mm -hmm. if you're a motion coach, there comes a time in the game that you're going to want a particular player taking the shot from a particular play from the floor, and you want to know that you're going to have rebound coverage on that shot. 
Boy, that, that is outstanding advice for high school coaches, junior high coaches, uh, anybody with limited time because just to run through five on oh, a bunch of set plays takes a lot of time, uh, let alone uh, all the uh, attrition that you're going to get when you run them five on five. I had a coach tell me one time, you know, you, sometimes you got to trick these kids. You tell them, I'm going to teach you one play, but we're going to do a lot of neat stuff off of, off of this one play. Well, basically what you're saying is I'm going to give you something that looks the same, but it's like 15 different plays. And what a great approach, I think. Uh, you know, the confused player is just not a very uh, not a very good player at all. And if we can keep, uh, keep their, you know, keep them in a clear uh, frame of mind, I think they can execute much better. So I think that's terrific advice. Um, Absolutely. You know, it goes back to the old joke that, you know, about Tarkanian said that, uh, you know, that the, the more your players think, you know, the, the slower they get. And, of course, Don Meyer says, well, that's the reason why Tark didn't have his players go to class. So, you know, again, you, you, you really want to, you know, you really want to, again, you want to make it simple and, and really focus on the execution part versus, you know, having a kid look over and go, okay, well, well you know, five down, what is that? You know, I, I don't, I, did we work on that or I'm not sure? So, uh, you know, hopefully you've got a player at that point, you just, hey, just say, hey, you go get the ball, everybody else get out of the way, he's going to handle it from here. Coach, I want to go back to uh, the, one of the previous sets, the Brazil. We had a question on the Brazil horns action. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, Gabe uh, says, number two stays in the corner or rotates up on Brazil horns action. And I think this is where we're at right here, I believe is what he's asking. Gabe, that's a good question. Um, on that one, too, it, Two really should be lifting up, and, and the reason why is to pull uh, his defender out of help to possibly help on, on five there. And uh, if he does, you know, instead of making the post feed, then you you could probably skip it right over to two on the wing for the for the open jump shot. So uh, in that situation, yeah, two sh really should be lifting up and, and almost coming to a maybe almost a halfway point where if uh, his defender does close out, now it's a longer close out, and, and two can either drive it or of course. If he's slowing the clothes out, he can he can shoot the jump shot. Seth makes a comment down in the chat box, Coach, that they like to do the same for baseline out, which, again, is a small fraction of the game, but yet in a, an important part of the game. And do you try to teach your kid eight out-of-bounds plays, or do you teach him one set and do different things from it? So, again, I think that applies and is pretty consistent. Uh, so appreciate the comment by Seth. Uh, Bobby says, as a high school coach, uh, my kids will learn 15 sets uh, minimum a year, uh, but truly only five sets with two counters each. And again, that's that same theme that, that we've been talking about. Have you ever seen five uh, go dribble handoff to two? I wonder if that was the, uh, I'll go ahead to, to the screen we were on there to see if that addresses that. don't know if this is it, Coach, or there was a question have you ever seen five go dribble handoff to two? On this particular play right here? I'm on the sure. front high low action? I'll go back one to see if. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Dustin, if you could maybe fire another question in there and clarify that for us as to which play you were talking about. Uh, Bobby says we're able to run a ball screen motion, some dribble drive, some Princeton uh, to post up guards. I found if you implement sets at the junior high level, you're able to absorb and learn how to execute sets better. That's definitely true. Tony in Australia, uh, what sort of volume of plays do you think you could get in with only three to four hours of training time per week? I think in that kind of situation, you you obviously have to simp you obviously have to simplify it. But I would think you know just running a basic you know screen down action, what what the pros call a floppy action, where you have your guards coming off of screens to the top, uh, and you catch it. You know, and basically you catch it. And you catch the ball on the wing. You're in a one two two set at that point. From there, you can do a variety of things. You could ball, you could go ball screen. You could you can go into a motion. Um, you can um, you can obviously throw the ball inside. And the nice thing about that is that you could 
also structure it so that your sideline and your baseline out of bounds play is basically the same thing as your floppy action. Mm -hmm. So now you have one action that you've taught and you have all these counters that you can um, that you can run out of it. And again, you're just focusing on that versus having to throw in a bunch of plays, um, you know, and, and hopefully that your kids uh, can remember. Because I've been in that situation in AAU where, you know, we only have a couple hours per week and, you know, unless you've just got great talent, you know, on, the, on your AAU team, then, you know, you better, you got to have some things to, to make them look good. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dustin came back said if five would fake the three and then go dribble handoff on France. So I took it back to this. Okay, that's that's a good question. That's on this on the, on this particular now on this particular set you could, but this was actually a set that the French women ran uh, during the uh, during the Olympics. And what happened was that two comes and gets the handoff from five. So two basically comes off the four screen. So to, to set the play up, four pops out, five sets the back screen, four is going to reverse to five, and then four screens down for two. So two is looping all the way over and, and catch and, and basically getting the, the ball from five uh, in, this, uh, in this particular frame. And then as we move to the next one, as soon as five hands the ball off, Five's now screening down for four, and so on the reversal pass from five to four, four is now looking high-low. So now four is looking to make that post feed into five. If it's not there, if five's defender manages to get over the top, then one's coming, lifting up towards the wing, four can now swing it to one, and one now makes the post feed into five. But, but Randy, if we could go back to that first frame, that that first uh, that first frame of, of France high low, the Greek men run this this very similar action, and, and they run it with Cal, uh, Calentis, the the kid that used to play for for Florida. Uh, and what they like to do off this is when when he when two comes up and gets the ball from five, basically they go right into a pick and roll at that point. So two's coming up, getting the handoff from five. Two immediately changes direction and drives into the middle of the floor. So four, after screening spaces out, five would roll to the basket and, and three lifts up. And, and I have all this diagram on some other, some, some other playbooks that I'll be happy to share with the coaches, you know, if, if they just email me, you know, tonight after the clinic, you know, I'll send that over to them if they want to see that action. But you see a lot of teams doing that now. Instead of dribble, ha dribble handoff with five, five's just going to protect the ball, two's going to come get it, and then change direction and go right into a ball screen. Coach, what I think I'll do, let me take this opportunity to do some sharing here. If I can find, uh, if I can find this, I have uh, your notes from uh, that that you had sent out, which has all these plays on it. And there's a real neat feature uh, of this product that we're on, Talk Fusion, that allows. Uh, me to throw documents up and share them with everybody and I just need to find them now. Uh, I had that out here all ready to go. Uh, I will find that and throw that up in the uh, file share box and uh, let everybody have those. Uh, next question, um, I used your Euro ball screen offense the past two years and love it. So you're having an influence here on these coaches on the call. That's great. Well, I, you know uh, that the the, the Euro ball screen um, has just has really been great for us at, at Chapel Hill, and has um, uh, it's just it's it's an offense I really love uh, because we've we've had some success with it. Um, in fact, Jamie and I uh, uh, did a, a book on it together, and uh, it's really it's it's just really effective. And, and if I could tell the story. I had an NBA assistant coach tell me that he showed this ball screen offense to um, to a coach that he worked for, and this is a Hall of Fame coach, and they put it in for a game against Miami and beat Miami uh, two years ago. And this particular coach told me that if he went back to the college level, that he would run that European ball screen offense. And 
this past year, you know, there would be times I'm watching Kentucky, they ran it. Uh, I'd watch uh, Duke, they were running it. Uh, saw Minnesota run it. it it's, really, it's really effective, and, and especially at the high school level where there's no shot clock. If you get three or four reversals, you know, you're shooting layups or you should be getting a high percentage shot with it. Um, and it's, um, it's really come to a point where, you know, we see more zone than anything because if, if a team goes man and we get this a couple of times, you know, we're getting some good looks. They're, they're quickly switching out of it. Mm-hmm. Hey, Randy, I just wanted okay, to... Okay, I found my document. So Randy, while you, what while we're you're... going to do, coaches, R well, we've got a file share box here. I've just uploaded the sets for you. And you're going to see download over to your right, and you just simply click download and save that wherever you'd like to save it on your computer. And all the plays that we're looking at tonight actually came from uh, a PDF document uh, that the coach was good enough to send out and that I got my hands on. And you're going to have all of these plays uh, at your disposal. Slide that right over here. Uh, Gabe says, will the entire broadcast uh, be able to be viewed later as well? Yes, it will. Everybody that's on the program tonight will have the opportunity to receive a link uh, which will take you right to this program. Absolutely. Feel free to uh, share it with your coaching friends also. Uh, we, w we just want to spread uh, these types of programs out as much as we can. Uh, Randy. Tracy asks, how effective is the Euro ball screen offense in a high league that uses a 35 second shot clock? I think it, it can be effective. I, I think that you could really, you know, get maybe two to three reversals out of it um, it, it before you get down to the point of where, you know, you're having to, to run something maybe late in the clock. But, you know, a lot of teams, when they get to that 10 second mark on the shot clock, they're usually running a ball screen anyway. So at least in, in, with, the, with, the, with the Euro ball screen, you're already in spacing, and um, you know, hopefully you've got a situation where you've got the right people um, who are using, um, who are coming off that screen and, and attacking. Um, I, you know, I know Jamie's on the, on the call here, and Jamie has used it overseas um, in coaching internationally. He might be able to, to, to give some feedback in terms of, of, of his experience with it at the, uh, on the shot. Yeah, you bet. F feel free to uh, type in some comments there, uh, Jamie, on that. And it looks like Nick is, is running it um, uh, also and having great success with it. Got a ton of looks off the reversal ball screen. And if you can just keep up with, uh, uh, in Massachusetts, our shot clock is 30 seconds and it still works for us. Uh, Coach Hepley out in Massachusetts. So great. We'll keep up with those. Uh, comments as we roll along here, Coach. Uh, China Horns Shuffle. Hey, Randy, can you hear me? Okay, now. Yes. Just, re uh, just really quickly, I just wanted to uh, also remind you if you wanted to try the, the whiteboard feature, uh, if, if uh, Coach wants to go over some points later, and, and I don't know if you did try it already, to, uh, you know, you know, because it, you can set it so that uh, anybody can write on the whiteboard after he goes through these sets. If he wants to try that, just just something to keep in mind. Okay. Go ahead, coach. All yours. Okay. So so the China Horn Shuffle. Um, basically, this is a, um, a a variation of the old Dean Smith uh, B series, the the Shuffle Cup play, which um, everybody has run at some level. Some some teams have called the Kansas Shuffle. Um, you know, over here in, in Tar Heel country, it's called the B series. Um, and so, basically, what you have is, you know, China ran this out of the horn set. It, it starts with uh, make basically one hitting five, who's the, the post player that you want to screen for. One's going to screen down for four, and uh, four pops out to, to catch the ball at the top of the key. Now, at the same time that one's making the pass to five, two and three, uh, three screening for two. So, when the reversal pass from five to four and that, that pass from four to one is made, three is now coming up and setting the back screen for five. So five's cutting basically to the block area, one's looking for five, and then four's cleaning it up, 
with a, a screen for three. So four screens down for three, and you have the, the screen, the screen interaction. Um, if you're familiar with, with Carolina, they have a counter where what they do is that when one pops out, one instead of popping out to the wing, one fakes the, the pop out cut and then cuts back door. Uh, China didn't uh, didn't run that, but uh, but again, it's, it's a very effective counter if you like to run this particular step. They call that B2, um, which I don't think I'm giving away any any state secrets here. With uh, I don't think Coach Williams will uh, will call me tomorrow morning and ask me to come to his office for for giving that away there. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the end of it there, I guess. We'll okay, what's our, what's our next one here? Lift the winning of three down. Okay, now... Just about every international team has a, a philosophy, and, and, and again, this is also, I think, a philosophy for all coaches, is that you know, you'd love to have a four that can shoot it, a stretch four, which is the, the, the popular term right now, and you, you also like to have a... You, you also would like to have a, a three-man that you could post up, and so this is Lithuania's three down. Uh, in the past, they would run this for Siskowskis, who was... Uh, who played for uh, the Lithuanian national team and had a great career uh, primarily with Seska Moscow. But it, it starts with, um, you can run it off the break or, or run it out of a half-court set, but one dribbles over, two's going to come off of a, like a little loop action to the top of the, of the key off of four and five. Now, at the same time, three's cutting towards the rim, and as two comes off the first screen by four, four's popping out and catching the ball from one, Three down a position and, and posting up. So four is looking to make that that post feed into three. Two, who comes off of that initial screen by four and five, is going to sprint all the way to that opposite corner. And then five setting a little like a little flare screen there for one in order to occupy the defenders there so they can't help on a on a possible feed in into uh, three there from four. Okay, so on this one, uh, again, another uh, uh, set that Spain likes to run. And, and, you know, Randy, when we were talking about ball screens earlier, you know, a lot of teams, you know, sometimes, especially here in America, we typically like to set that middle ball screen, you know, just by having four just step out and set the screen. And then you get into the middle, the flat ball screen or the, the middle angle screen. But what a lot of teams are doing now is having some sort of false movement or an action in order to occupy the defenders and then sprint the screener to the ball. Because the idea is that you want that screener to basically have separation from the defender and get mm -hmm. there so that the defender is now late and it's almost impossible for them to hedge or to help in that situation. So on this particular right. play, it's like a, it's just a quick over-under action with two cutting over the top of four, three clearing out to the opposite side of the floor. As soon as two clears off of four, Four sprints up into the in, into the middle of the floor and sets that flat angle screen with their shoulders pointing towards half court and allows one to come off of either side here. Now, if four is a shooter, four can pick and pop. If you want to put a, a, a bigger player there and switch, let's say, your five with your four, then five could roll opposite of one and you can play pick and roll. And then, depending on your philosophy, you could either put your four man down in the short corner or you could spot your four man up if he or she's a shooter and you spot them up on the perimeter. So now you're running, you know, you're into more of a spread pick and roll, which is, uh, again, something that's become very popular in recent years with a lot of teams playing with a stretch four, you know, a four that can shoot it from the perimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a question here from Kevin. Do you ever take your non-shooting post and play him as a weak side duck in uh, or in the short corner? kind of like Kansas fist offense. Yes, we have done it in the past um, where our non-shooter basically plays, goes to the block and, and ducks in. And I, I think that's a very effective option if you have, because you might have a situation where you've got a, let's say you've got a football player, a big lineman 
uh, that plays basketball, who's playing football, who comes in, they have maybe some limited skill in the post, but they're, you know, they're pretty big. They can take up space. You know, a, a duck in is a very effective move. I mean, let's face it, how many championships did John Wooden win with that UCLA offense and that, just that simple duck in for, for that high low? So, you know, that's a very simple post move to, to teach. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, personnel-wise, when you can, um, when you have a situation with a post flow that's limited, that's probably the best option versus putting them out on the, out on the top in the perimeter and having them have to make a decision with the ball or, or possibly even try to, to dribble the ball. Right. Well, now, in this diagram, uh, continuity here. Yeah. Now, this is just a this is just a variation of that middle ball screen that we just showed. Just a, again, a, another way to get into the action. And again, the idea is to basically occupy Ford's defender and make him or her help here, not on one screen but two screens. So once now sets mm -hmm. that wide pin down for three, and you're also now changing who you're, you're running the, the middle pick and roll with because the first diagram, it was just for one. Now we're running it for our, our, our three-man, or this could be our two-man, right. you know, depending on, on who you want to utilize here. But um, as soon as three catches, one's now cutting off of four, two's lifting up, and then four sprinting up and, and setting that uh, ball screen now for three. Very good. We're getting close here to uh, the end of our plays, and then I think we'll just uh, – this is our last play, Coach, uh, USA Elbow, and then I think we'll go to some questions and then uh, wrap it up. This is, the, this is the first play that we ran in the Olympics for uh, uh, against France, and, and, and let's face it, you know, you don't really have to run a lot of stuff when you have LeBron, Carmelo, Chris Paul, Kobe, I mean, you know, Kevin – it's just, you know, it, it's, a, it's a dream, you know, to, to have a team like that on the floor. But this is, this is pure Mike D'Antoni. This is just a, a, a great D'Antoni action. Um, you, you're, putting, you're putting your best athlete three at the elbow. Obviously, this was LeBron. Um, as soon as he caught it, your five man, Chandler's sprinting over, setting that middle screen and roll. Three's looking to attack the rim. And basically, if you get a switch in this situation, all you got to do is throw the ball up towards the rim and five can go catch it because you've got a smaller player switched over onto, uh, onto the five man. And then obviously three could, could drive the mismatch and get to the rim. You have one and four spotting up. The other thing that you could do off this play, and, and this is something that Butler, you know, during their years that they went to the final four, they would make a killing off this. It's that basically if, if a team likes to hedge in this situation, Three comes off that screen. Notice two's lifting up here to the wing. Well, three would immediately just kick it right back to two. Now, five's just turning and, and locating that defender on the high side and pinning him and throwing the ball inside because there's no way that five's defender can help on that ball screen and now recover back to five posting up. So it, it's a really effective action, especially if you've scouted and you know um, that, um, that the team likes to hedge on a um, – on a, on a ball screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to answer Nick's question, yes, yeah. this is this is a play that uh, that that, that D'Antoni ran for for Sotomayor. This is pretty much a a, a Sotomayor uh, play to get him rolling at the rim. And, and really, if that was Nash or which whoever guard it was, like I said, they switched it. Or even if they, you know if they didn't switch it, and still they could you know even if they went over it, he rolled. You're just throwing it at the rim, and he can just catch it and go up with it. Uh, Bobby asked about, uh, he's in southwest Ohio, a lot of teams uh, just try to eliminate the on-ball screen with hard, aggressive traps. What's something you've seen uh, in this game here, Coach, that is effective uh, to immediately do to counter someone that's coming hard to trap on an on-ball screen? Well, I, I think it depends on, on, on when the screen occurs, because if, if we're talking about a, a trap that occurs as the ball screen occurs, then I think there's a, there's a couple things that you really have to teach and you have to emphasize. The first thing is that you're now running, you're no longer in your half-court offense. You're now in press offense. So basically what that means is that you have got to back dribble towards half-court. You know, what I used to do is we used to teach the, the back dribble towards 
you know, basically back towards the, the corners. Well, you're just inviting another trap in that situation. So right. if I back dribble at an angle towards the middle of the floor, I'm creating what Fran Frischella always talks about, time and space. I'm creating time in order to stretch the defense out, and by stretching the defense out and back dribbling, are they going to continue to follow me out and continue to trap? Or some teams, as soon as you take that second back dribble, they're recovering back and trying to get back in, into their defensive coverage. So they're not going to keep the trap on. As soon as that happens, then you've got to have three defender or three offensive players coming towards the basketball. You've got to have a player down the side. You've got to have a player in the middle of the floor. And you've got to have a player basically as an emergency outlet. And you should be able to hit one of those three players. If you're not able to hit one of those three players because they're all covered, then that last player should be in the deep corner, and you're basically throwing over the trap into the corner to, you know, to an open player. So you create time and space in, in terms of on the, on, the, on the trap. Now, if it's, a tra if it's an early trap, if it's a trap where they're immediately running out into the middle or to, to trap the ball handler, then you really want to think about your initial set that you maybe start in a 1-3-1 one, one, or maybe a 1-4, so that as they sprint out to get to that early trap, you can immediately hit a player and attack from there. But uh, you know the big thing that that point guard or, or the ball handler has to understand, I have to basically sacrifice myself and not make a play here and try to beat these two guys. I've got to stretch it out, create space, open up the floor, and now try to find an open man. Very good. want to make all the coaches aware of where they can go to tap into the brilliance of this guy that we have uh, and, and are very fortunate to have on this program. I'm going to go get the link so I can paste it right into the chat box here for everybody. But Full Court Basketball has a catalog uh, full of uh, Coach Perkins' DVDs on just an awful lot of uh, great subjects and I'm going to pop it right in there if you guys uh, click on that and want to save that uh, bookmark it uh, refer to it later it'll it'll a, a page will pop up with with 18 different um, uh, DVDs and uh, coach what I'd like to do too is um, if you uh, we, we got we got your uh, PDF of your plays uh, what, do you have uh, an email that you could share with the coaches? Certainly there's going to be some questions, uh, maybe about some of your products or a question about some of the plays or just basketball or coaching uh, in general. I know I have it, but I, I'll let you type that right in there if you would, and then I'll go, to, uh, I'll go to our last page. I'm sure these coaches would love to touch base with you. So there's Layson's, uh, both his email and his Twitter, uh, and Twitter, uh, yeah, it's Coach yeah, Perkins, Coach not CO. I, I, I have a type, I have a typo there. Um, Randy, you. let me, let me mention to everybody, um, that, um, if you email me, I, I have a spam filter set up, so, uh, just mention that you were on the clinic, on the, on the call tonight. And, uh, I mean, I'm here to serve. I, I, I will help in any way possible. Uh, I know there's some coaches here that uh, get some of the mailings that I like to send out on occasion um, to, to everybody. And, and again, I, I will share with you anything that I have or help you in any way. Uh, just feel free, to, um, feel free to email me and just let me know what I can do. Well, we sure appreciate that. Like I said in the outset, uh, I, I just really consider uh, you – uh, a, a small group of guys, and there's great, great guys in this profession, but a small group of guys that that will uh, basically give the shirt off your back. And uh, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, we need to protect this profession. We need to protect this game. And the only way we can do it, one of the great ways I think we can do it, is to share, especially with the younger coaches, to try to give them, uh, get them on the right path to start. And um, boy, we, we can't take we can't take this knowledge and experience with us, so we might as well share it with everybody else. And that that's just the way I, I like to look at it too. I know Todd does the same, and 
that's why you're a perfect guest for us. I've got this DVD right here, and this comes from Coach Perkins, great scoring plays from around the globe. And what I'm going to do on this last page here, if you would like to have an opportunity to win this, this is a $30 DVD, on the screen, uh, go to uh, my website, coachrb.com. I'll type it in here so you can just... And I have a membership site that's got hundreds of videos. Uh, clinic videos and notes, video highlights. I've got a lot of my FIBA stuff up there, articles, diagrams and plays, advice from uh, just a lot of the great coaches I know in the game, uh, exclusive, exclusive member videos. And then, uh, Coach, what I've done is I've taken this game, and what I've tried to do is, is for a coach who's interested in, let's say, a, a, a ball handling drill or, or how to handle a a troubled player or a parent. I've tried to take the game and put it in 25 different categories so coaches can just dive in to, to each of those collections. And uh, I, I really had a ball putting this together, and I really uh, 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 got, got an awful lot of people that, that enjoy it and ha speak highly of it. But I want to give everybody a chance to win this DVD. All you need to do is go to uh, thecoachrb.com and click on Free Trial Membership. There's a 14-day free trial membership that give you access to my website for two weeks. And what I'll do is 24 hours. So at 9.15 tomorrow night, uh, I'll take entries. Uh, all you do is, again, go to the website, sign up for a free trial membership. We've had 45, I think, were the most we had on the call tonight. And uh, uh, so you've got a great chance to, uh, to pick this up and uh, look at the other 17 the coach has got. Uh, on that site too. So, uh, uh, Lassen, couldn't couldn't thank you enough, uh, and uh, uh, for your time, and uh, for your uh, commitment to the game, and sharing with these coaches that we we need to do more of this. Uh, I think this is just a great great way to share, and and uh, uh, th this is only going to get better and better. I, uh, your mind, I know, is probably just spinning on on how we can you know, how, how we can continue to share the game. And the comments have been tremendous here in the in the chat box. But thanks so much for coming on. We really, really appreciate it. Randy and Todd, I, I really, I'm honored. This is this has been a blast for me. And, um, you know, again, um, we've talked about this for a while, and, and now that it's done, and I see how convenient and how easy this has been. This has been a great experience, and, and, and I would love to be a part of something again in the future. And uh, you know, you know, Randy, your site is a great resource. If, if if coaches have not taken advantage of joining that site, they're missing out on some great material. I, I love going and looking at the videos. Anytime I see that there's a new video online that you posted, I immediately go to it and watch it and, and pick up some great drills, especially the a lot of the stuff that you've done with the workouts is stuff that we've you know that we've been doing with our uh, individual work. So again, great resource in, in your website, and this is a great resource for coaches around the world to share. And uh, you know, the nice thing I like about it is there's no, there's no fluff. You know, there's no uh, um, we're not wasting time. We're not telling stories. We're giving out basketball so that coaches can can take and, and right. make their players better. But most importantly, why why we're all here is that we have an opportunity to to be. Um, mentors and, and, and teachers to our players and, and help shape individual lives. So I'm just proud to be part of a profession where there's men and women that are dedicated to doing that. Outstanding. Yeah, terrific. It's, it's been great to have you. And I, I think we'll end up just having uh, my partner there, Todd, just talk about uh, briefly online basketball clinics and what we've got uh, to look forward to here is uh, this exciting time of year. Um, uh, coaches are getting ready. They're they're preparing, getting ready for that first high school practice, and uh, we 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 really want to go gangbusters with this program. I think this is a terrific time for coaches to start to tap in and begin to think about their practices. So, Todd, what do we got to look forward to? Um, well, we, I mean, you know, we you and I we've talked about uh, all the different people. We've got guys on the call even right now, like Jamie. Uh, Jamie, uh, we've got uh, we've talked to. Uh, jump specialists, athletic development specialists. There's all kinds of potential. Uh, you know, I've got my connections with uh, Jay Triano, uh, you know, Brian Gorgian from Australia. I mean, there's there's so many people that we could uh, potentially talk to to get on a call like this. I foresee 
possibility of having a thousand coaches on or 500 coaches or i mean it's unlimited mm -hmm. the amount of people that we can have in this chat room yeah uh just sharing ideas and, and i know uh you know people are busy at night time an hour and a half two hours uh if you go to a clinic it's travel time you're there for two days and you know you pick and choose what you want to go watch but something like this if you have shorter clinics more frequently uh, i think it might be uh more advantageous for people and people might uh, be able to get more out of that where their minds don't turn to mush at the end of a you know two-day clinic where your brain saying I, I can't right I, I can't absorb any more information <laughs> so uh, I think these shorter clinics uh, more frequently are a great way to go so uh, we'll just keep advertising on online basketball .com. sign up for the uh, if you haven't already for the newsletter and then you'll get the uh, the updates uh, for future clinics as well as our Facebook page, which is Online Basketball Clinics on Facebook. Right. And, and you know, the other thing, too, we, we, we thought about, you know, what a great alternative uh, from going to clinics, not, not that clinics aren't great because they are, but uh, we're going to have a rebounding program. You know, we're going to have a program just on footwork. Uh, Paul Hoover, uh, a shooting specialist, uh, is going to be joining us for one of our future programs, and it will be all shooting. And I, I like the idea of themes because uh, you're right. You sit there and watch eight offenses, ten defenses, uh, uh, stretching drills, tennis ball this, tennis ball that, and <laughs> you, you don't know what to do by the time you get home. So, yeah, we like to keep it in a theme. Obviously, Coach is an expert in uh, international basketball and, of course, the set play, so that, that fits out great. we got a chance to focus on that for an hour and 20 minutes. So. If, if you're not sure if we have your email address, please type it into the chat box. Uh, if you received an email about this program, then you are on uh, our mailing list, and you will get every mailing uh, that, that is ever sent out. So be assured of that. And then last thing, um, I've already got a couple entries, by the way, for the DVD, so, so don't, don't waste time now when you get done. You, you take care of that because I've already got a couple guys that want to win that. Uh, but, but the other thing is that um, uh, we, we, we just uh, would love your feedback. We would like to know what you want to know, uh, what specific things. You know, we really need a program in high school coaches dealing with parents and, and dealing with players. I think that would be a, a terrific. So we need your feedback. We love the fact you took the time to come out. Uh, this is great. And... Uh, just just be on the lookout for the next one because I would think uh, probably in the next two weeks uh, we will have another online basketball clinic and we would love to have you join us. So, uh, Lassen, thank you so much. One more time, Todd, thanks. Uh, awesome program and uh, thanks so much for the coaches for coming out. That's what this is all about. So with that, I'll say good night and uh, we'll wrap up the program and we'll see you on the next online basketball clinic.